This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at an HP Business Ultrabook. This is the HP Elitebook 820, 12.5 inch display available with Windows 7 or Windows 8 for you retro types and businesses that still need Windows 7. And here's the neat thing about it it's actually a really nice looking machine. You know, usually Business Ultrabooks are pretty bland. HP brings a lot of their consumer styling here, and we're going to look at it now. So this is the HP EliteBook 820. EliteBook is, well, their business line of machines and their nicer line of business machines. Uh, technically, it's the EliteBook 820 G1. Somehow G1 seems to get tacked onto a lot of the EliteBook names. First thing you're going to notice about it is, well, it's 12.5 inches, so it's not really huge. And 12.5 inches is the new 13 inches, maybe, for ultra business ultrabooks. The ThinkPad Lenovo ThinkPad X240 is also 12.5 inches, for example. The Dell XPS 12 is 12.5 inches, but it's not ugly. It's not the skinniest thing you've ever seen in the world, but aha, there's a good reason for it, and you'll, you'll like that. But it's got some styling to it. It has a matte magnesium alloy lid to it. It looks pretty good, the blacked out HP logo, so it's not too ultra flashy there. Got some tapering to the sides, and notice the, the complex lines here. It's kind of nice the way it, it's not just a simple black box. For business machine, good looking. Again, not super skinny, but why is that? Well, here's the neat thing. You know how you, in an ultra book you can never get inside these things, even the ThinkPad. X240, you got to unscrew a whole lot of Phillips head screws. You feel like you're not really being invited in there. HP says, go ahead, knock yourself out. Right here, we have the bottom, and up here, we have a release switch. And looky dooky, there it is, everything. This is the battery, you can actually remove it. There's two different battery capacities. We have the 46 watt hour battery in here. So you can pop that, as you can see, there's little release latches. So it's not your traditional style removable battery. Obviously it is still swappable. There's your two and a half inch SATA hard drive. You can get this with a conventional spinning hard drive or an SSD drive. Right here we have the flash cache, which is labeled. They, they really expect IT departments to actually open these up and work on them, so it's nice. There's no guessing what the heck these things are. So if you want a spinning conventional hard drive and say a 32 gig caching drive, there's your M2 slot for that. Wide area or WAN, wide area LTE networking if you want that option. Here's our Wi-Fi card. This is dual band Intel 7260N Wi-Fi. And look, two RAM slots on a 12 and a half inch machine. You're lucky if you even get one. Often it's just soldered on board. Labeled here, DIM2. Again, everything's pretty clearly labeled so you can figure things out. So we have a four gig machine. We have one four gig DIM. And there's your fan over here in case you want to blow it out and clean it up. So that's why it's a bit thicker to allow access to your internal. So I know a lot of you who watch this are more interested in consumer line notebooks, but you say you'd love to have things like easily upgradable internals, more ports. So, you know, for some of you, the business notebooks really might be a better bet, especially something like this Elite Pad 820. So inside Thoroughly Modern Ultrabook, fourth generation Intel Haswell Ultrabook 15 watt CPUs, your choice of Core i3, i5, or i7. You can get one with vPro or without the usual i5-4200U, clocked at 1.6 gigahertz, Dual core, that's what we have inside here. As you saw, we have 4 gigs of RAM. And this one has a 180 gig SSD. That's the Intel SSD. You can get it with a variety of different SSDs or a 500 gig, 7200 RPM spinning hard drive with or without that flash cache. Now, in terms of ports, well, knock yourself out here. There's a lot of ports on this thing. Obviously, some ventilation here. A fairly cool, quiet machine. Ultrabooks usually are. There's obviously enough room for cooling inside of this, so this is not a noisy machine at all. You can bring it to a meeting and nobody will beat you. Lock slot right there, your ventilation, VGA port, handy for folks and businesses who still have legacy VGA monitors and projectors, USB 3.0 port with charging, smart card reader, business folks, you know what that is, the rest of you just ignore that little slot. Indicator lights on the front over here for sleep, charge status, that sort of thing. 3.5 millimeter combo audio jack, full size display port right there for higher resolution monitors, that's always nice. Another USB 3.0 port, another USB 3.0 port for a total of three ports. That's gigabit ethernet there, wired networking. And here we have docking connector because this actually works with HP's dock. Being a business oriented machine, business folks like docks. So you can take this away, then bring it right back to your desk and just plug in the dock connector to have everything working at once. And there's our charging connector. And down here, yes, there is an SD card reader, and it's inset here, a little blank dummy, so it's not going to stick out real far. In fact, it won't stick out at all when you have a card in there, which is nice. Robustly made, mil-spec, according to HP, 
feels strong enough. It doesn't rip, doesn't flex, anything like that. You, you drop it, nothing much happens to it. Not that I'm saying you should be slamming this thing around, but it's pretty sturdy. And nice looking with the usual HP logo on the back, just like consumer machines. So attractive package, particularly well configured when it comes to ports, especially considering 12.5 inches and 2.94 pounds. That's not bad. Charger is very compact. Lightweight, 45 watt charger right here. Usual plenty of cord on it, so easy to use. Not much to carry around. Again, good for the light business traveler. Inside, here's the good news and here's the bad news. This is a 1366 by 768 display. This is not a touch screen. There is no touch screen option that we have found on this. There is a higher quality panel option available. This is the base quality level. The nice thing about this is it's matte, so you're not getting a whole lot of glare there. The bad thing is you can see how it appears and disappears. The viewing angles aren't super wide. They're not hideous. We've seen certainly worse things than this, but not super great. Color saturation is okay, not superb on this. So uh, sadly, a lot of business machines get short change on display quality. This would be one where the display is okay, but not great. Again, matte does count for a lot, and you can go for the higher quality display option. Still going to be 1366 by 768 which for a lot of business users, let's face it, is perfectly acceptable, especially given the way Windows handles scaling or Windows apps, and not so well. Speaking of Windows, right here, Windows 7 we have. Aha, you can get it with Windows 8 or Windows 7. It's up to you. HP decided to ship this to us with Windows 7, I think, to outline the fact that that is still an available option here. So for those of you, or for those of you with IT departments that still prefer Windows 7, there it is. And hence, the lack of a touch screen makes sense here because of Windows 7, the touch experience really wasn't paramount like it is in Windows 8. Unlike the ThinkPad, the display does not go all the way back. That's as far back as it goes. And if we lift it up here, you can see HP does a good job with keyboards, generally speaking. This one is nice and firm. It does not flex a whole lot. It has backlighting, which just came on. It's a little bit hard to see in good lighting, but there, I'll turn it sideways so you can see it now. Anyway, nicely laid out keyboard, very comfortable. Everything is where you expect it to be. Uh, FN key to uh, actuate your multimedia functions, your volume. There's even a microphone on off button here. Again, business oriented kind of stuff. And here we have a wireless on off and a mute button, usually important to business users. And on the opposite side, we have our power button over here on that side. And then we have the grill over here, speaker grill. Notice the trackpad and the track pointer. As ever, HP is trying to steal away Lenovo ThinkPad customers, and to that end, those folks are used to having their track point, the embedded eraser stick pointer, with the dual sets of buttons over here. Now, Lenovo has moved over to the buttonless trackpad design. still has the functionality of all these buttons, but the physical clicky buttons are gone. HP sticks with this, and I know a lot of you traditionalists kind of miss those moving clicky buttons. You get them here. These are very soft buttons. It's funny, some manufacturers have very stiff trackpads and very stiff keyboards. This is very, very soft. Key travel on this, you can see from the side, it's not super duper high. It's not quite up there with some of the better ThinkPad keyboards or even Dell keyboards. It's not a terrible keyboard, but I would just like a little more traveled for it to feel comfortable. And the keys aren't really concave, they're just flat and they're not shaped in any way. So it's a very competent keyboard, but it's not the best of the best. And now for comparison, because obviously these two are direct competitors, we have the Lenovo ThinkPad X240 and our HP EliteBook 820 right here. And you can see they're about the same size. Uh, the screen quality, these are both 1366 by 768 panels. The HP is seriously matte. There's a kind of an anti-glare coating on our Lenovo, but the Lenovo has a more pleasing screen. It, it, it's just got that nice kind of, hey, I'm an IPS screen look. So you start out with a better screen there without having to upgrade like you do with the HP, which isn't the end of the world. Keyboards, you can see the difference in key height here with the Lenovo. Definitely a better keyboard there, but you do get that buttonless trackpad that does drive some people absolutely nutty. Lenovo, of course, opens up flat for those of you who need to do that kind of thing. And if we close them up, about the same footprint, just a very different idea of styling between these two. Both have rigid designs of ThinkPads using carbon fiber on the top and a roll cage and magnesium for the top cover as well. This guy, all metal on the outside. And guess what? They're priced about the same. Uh, the ThinkPad X240 doesn't get quite as inexpensive for the base model, but 
normally configured, say you get an i5 42 or 4300U on these 4 gigs of RAM and a SSD drive, you're looking at about the same price. HP has quite a few security features. Again, it's a business-oriented machine. It should. We have the fingerprint scanner right here. Friendly location for your right-handed people. Trusted platform module inside. We have BIOS protection. And we have something here on the screen that says HP Trust Circles. Now, this isn't something out of Meet the Fockers with their circle of trust. This is actually a software feature where anybody who... Only people, let me put it that way, who are in your contacts list can actually access files on this computer. So a way to try to stop hackers from stealing data off of your drive. Now inside, this, this is an Ultrabook, just like you would expect. A full Windows 64-bit. Again, your choice of Windows 7 or Windows 8. If you get win, get it with uh, Windows 7, you actually get Windows 8 with downgrade rights to Windows 7. So here we have IE Web Browser. And let's test out video playback so you can see what that looks like. And so we can hear the speakers. And we'll look at our Galaxy Note Pro 12.2 review. Speed is perfectly good, 1366 by 768, so you're not seeing a whole lot on the screen at a time if you're used to Full HD displays, but most business users, poor business users, they're not. I'll bring it up to 720p, so that's pretty loud. So this is it, the Samsung Galaxy Even at 50% volume, it's pretty loud. Too. A lot of words in that title. title, Samsung is a wordy company, aren't they? And some folks have accused them of gadget spam. They do make an awful, awful lot of products, and particularly now, tablets in every so, single... not bad at all for a business notebook. If you're going to be giving PowerPoint presentations with audio or anything like that, the speakers are actually pretty darn tolerable on this. And HP does have a good heritage in putting nice speakers in laptops thanks to their commercial line of Envy laptops and so on. And in addition to dual band Wi-Fi in here, an optional WAN LTE 4G if you want it, you have Bluetooth 4.0 inside. As you saw, you can get you have two DIMM slots, so you can go 4 gigs, 8 gigs of RAM in theory. You should be able to go up to 16 gigs of RAM. You can go up to a Core i7. It's still going to be a ULV Ultrabook CPU, so you're looking at the Core i7-45 or 4600U. And if you, if you want to go up to that, then say you want to get an SSD drive as well, you're, you're looking at around $1,400 or so. So how about battery life? As you saw, we have the 46 watt hour, the larger battery option. Both of those are inside under the bottom cover there. And so far we've been managing between seven, seven and a half hours on a charge, which isn't bad. It's not a wildly bright display and it's not high resolution. So that certainly isn't a drag on this. And this is an Ultrabook with Ultrabook CPUs and Intel HD 4400 integrated graphics. Uh, probably with some stronger power management, you could push this even a bit farther with the higher capacity battery. So that's not too bad at all. In terms of benchmarks, it scores pretty much like what you would expect from a Ultrabook, PC Mark 7, 4,018. Now we see 45 to 4,900 often on the Core i5, so that's a little bit lower, but that's also because it's running Windows 7 too, and it has the Intel 180 gig SSD, which is a fine SSD, but not as fast as some of the newer SSDs that are available. W Prime, it computed Pi in 24.8 seconds. That's uh, pretty par for the course, maybe a teeny bit slow, but not bad. Geekbench 3. 2395 single core and multi core 4647. That's actually quite a strong score there. Good on Geekbench 3. And let's check out the SSD score next. And here's how Crystal Disk Mark Benchmark scored the SSD drive. Not bad. The write speeds are not phenomenally high on this particular drive. Again, you have a couple of different SSD drive options, or obviously it's pretty easy to pop the drive of your choice in there. So, all in all, it's a very competent little laptop, Ultrabook. Portable, not bad looking, sturdy, lots and lots of ports, a docking station option. Price is pretty reasonable. Sometimes business machines can really, really be expensive. This one isn't bad at all. The only thing that kind of hurts is the display quality. But again, you can opt for the higher quality panel. You're still not getting the touch screen, but at least it'll look better and you won't be getting full HD. Again, business users in a 12 and a half inch machine, maybe they don't crave that as much. And it's a perfectly usable resolution, even if it's not ooh, uh, ultra sharp. So that's the HP EliteBook 820 available now. Again, starting at around $874. Nice round number there, but as configured, about $1,200. And yeah, that's in league with other Ultrabooks. And you can get a lot of ports here. You get a lot of styling. You get a lot of security stuff. The screen is just okay. It's not the greatest that we've seen, though they do have a higher quality option that may look a whole lot better. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full review. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.